Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American over here in Germany tasting often rare and exotic whiskeys. Today I think something qualifies as rare and exotic. The Talisca single malt scotch whiskey aged eight years, a special release for 2021 from Diageo. So this is whiskey base number 186598. It is 59.7% ABV. And we have no idea what type of casks were used for. Isn't that great? So um, what do I mean? On the most of the other different um, bottlings from the special release of 2021 from Diageo, it says, for example, here, finished in wine casks, natural cask strength. Here it says, from refill and virgin oak casks. The Oban says here, um, from ex bourbon and refill casks. Here, no information whatsoever. It only says here um, from a selection of our strongest, or sorry, smokiest reserves, natural cast strength. <laughs> so it's supposed to be smoky and um, from the, the, the smokiest reserves. All right, good. So this over here, um, the recommended retail price is around 99 euros. Some of the places have 109, some of them have 89, so it's right in the middle there. And we have to remember that price when we talk about it. So it's above my 10 euros a year, usually my, my limits there, threshold, um, but that's okay. Now, there's a very smart book out there. I thought I knew a lot about Talisca, but apparently I don't. <laughs> I've actually done um, a Talisca uh, blind tasting with eight different bottles here and I compared the what is it the 30 year old um the 25 year old um I like the Port Re I like the 18 prices have go been going up and up and up the Port Re for example I used to be able to get it for 30 euros now it's 40 euros over here um the Talisca 10 I used to be able to get for 20 something euros now it's 30 something euros and so when we look at this at 99 euros, not that bad. Now, I've always liked Talisca. I don't love the 10, but I do like, as I mentioned, the 18 and the Port Re. And I've always just loved that amount of peat that's in there. Not too much. Then I started thinking, all right, this is the Agio Talisca. Where do they get their peated malt from? And then it's like, okay, go online. Of course, they get it from Glen Ord. Glenort is the place where Diageo makes a lot of their peated malt, their molding facility. No problem. And then I started reading in this smart book here, and I did not know that, that they use 25% unpeated and 75% peated, which has a um, phenol specification of 20 to 25 ppms. Now, Talisca also has five stills. Very interesting setup. Two wash stills three spirit stills. Hmm. They also have a purifier. I could get into that, won't. And they also use warm tubs. Yay. Telesca is doing a lot right. Now, I'm going to compare this with the old Telesca 10. Why do I say old? Because I have the, this is the old bottle. Um, it actually says on it, and I love this. It says, the only distillery on the Isle of Skye. So, this was the old packaging. They actually had cardboard um, reinforcement in there. I could almost stand on this box. This I really, really like. Is it environmentally friendly? Eh. Is it good for protecting my bottles? And then I have this one, the new bottle of Telesca 10. So it says here, um, from the oldest distillery on the Isle of Skye, made by the sea, 10 year old. Now, um, <laughs> I just love the fact that Tora Beg has now um, not just been open, but actually released their own products. So, Diageo and Talisco were forced to change the label here. So it doesn't say anything about the only or the oldest or whatever on this label here. Very, very good. So I have a little bit in here. Let's pour a little bit of the new in the middle and let's pour a little bit of the old on the side here and just compare. Now this is the typical 45.8% ABV that we know and 
hate or love by um, Taliska. Why is it not a little bit higher? Why doesn't it say unchilled filtered? Why do the bottles say mitfab stuff uh, with uh, artificial coloring on them? Why couldn't Taliska Diageo just make whiskey the way God intended it to? Now, if you take a look at these two bottles, you will see a little bit of a difference in the color. This is the newer is a little bit darker than the old one. Yes, there's more or less. Um, there's more here in the new bottle. There's less here. But if you do look at the glasses, I do have a, a hue on the new as well as darker. Now, um, does that does that have to do with better casks? Does that have to do with adding more caramel coloring? Maybe, maybe. And don't forget, um, this came with packaging. This was an optional packaging. So that means if this is actually in the store, people will see the color more than they see here. And our brain intuitively, rightly or wrongly, thinks darker means better. So this, um, I think they're always going to have a tube. Uh, this is much lighter. You can actually see through it, um, which is the eight-year-old. Now, there's one guy online. I was reading uh, his comments on Whiskey Base, and he said... Is this, since it's the smokiest, peatiest um, Talisca ever, the best product we've ever had, the purest Talisca? Or is this just basically new age from used, used, used old casks? Now, he actually wrote, I'm not going to name any names, but he wrote, he's tried this a few times, and this is his favorite Talisca. So, they must, they must be doing something right. And we're going to find out if it's my favorite Talisca as well. Talisca. Now, I like this. This is a bonfire on the beach. This is very, very typical to this guy. Taliska, sorry, Taliska, Taliska, um, with a little bit of citrus, a little bit of a briny type of sea salt moment going on here. The new one, I get a lot more of a, um, like a smokehouse. A smokehouse with a little bit of um, ham in there. And the old 10... I'm getting a lot more of a caramel, um, a little bit more of a um, smoothness going on here. Now, I'm not sure. This bottle is about six months old. We did the tasting. That's what's left of the second bottle. And this was actually my bottle that I've been using. Um, and this is about a year and a year and a half old. So it's been slowly um, working its way down. It has been protected from light. Thank you very much from the um, box here. Uh, but, um, yeah, it has spent more time open than these actually have. This has been only open for a few weeks. All right, so let's try this. Don't forget 59.7%. My tongue has to remember this as well. Cilantro. Is the whiskey too strong? Therefore, Jason is too weak. This, oh, this really blows my socks off a little bit. It's a little too hot. The nose, I like. The aftertaste, it's a creamy vanilla type of moment with that citrus and a little bit of that um, saltiness and a little bit of the bonfire going on. But nice. Wow, is that hot? Nice. So everything else we've had here, the Cardu and everything else was around 55. Now we have 59. These were a little bit older as well. This is only eight years old. So what I'm going to do, I found out that the way I like my Talisca um, 2021 special release is with water. So I take it down to about 53%. And then I retry it. The nose has not changed hardly at all. It's gotten a little bit weaker. Mm. And what I really love about this whiskey is the finish. It actually goes up. This has a very, very nice, typical Talisca cast strength finish. I've had a few, three, four, five in my life. This is maybe the best, if not one of the best. Um, that's good. There's a sweetness. There's that light smokiness, not too much. I love 20%, apparently. 20 to 25% PPM. Otbeg was a 55. 
just too much. Octomore, eh, no. This is where I'm at. Highland Park and Taliska, that's where I like to have my peat. Maybe um, a few other tiny little things here going on, but that's that's good stuff. This is a B B minus whiskey in my opinion. Love it. Is it worth the official 99? I can get it for 90. Yes, it is. I'm actually thinking about buying a second bottle of this, just stashing away and having it there for, for tasting with friends and so on. I think this is the, one of the best, purest um, representations of what Talisca can actually do. That's awesome. Now, do I prefer the 18-year-old? Yes, I used to be able to get 18-year-old for 80 euros. Now it's 130. So um, what does the Talisca 18 cost at the moment over here in Germany? So 130, 125, 160, All right, if you can find it, 160. That's just a little bit too much. As I said, I used to get it for 88, 99, around those prices. It used to be, uh, again, exactly, about 160 and so on. That's a lot of money, but still less than 10 euros per year. If you go 18 times 10, that's 180. So um, ah, prices, yeah. Don't you just hate them sometimes? Good stuff. All right, the added bonus today is the um, Tavisca 10, the old versus the new. Um, as I said, I'm going to be with B, B minus for taste, C for value for money. I actually think this is worth it. Now, I'm going to start off with the old. Why? Because the old is more toffee, more caramel, more sweetness. Um, I am not the best fan of the 10. If I have the choice between the 10 and the Port Rhee, I'm going to take the Port Rhee every single time. The Port Rhee, um, the Port Cast Finish Matured, um, Talisca with no age statement. This does have a 10 year old age statement. Everything from Talisca that's not from the special releases is basically always 45.8%. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Got a little bit of that chili catch. Toffee caramel. The smokiness is there without overpowering it. Well done. This is a solid C in my book. Now this, the new one, tastes different. It's much harsher. There's more of an alcohol bite. It's still 45.8, 45.8. I'm not sure if the bottles, if they're brand new, and I opened the bump up, if they would be that different, or was it actually the time in the bottle? I think it's a combination of both. I do think um, that they, at Talisca Diageo, might have reused some casks more now than they did back then. So not a first, second, and third fill, but a first, second, third, and maybe a fourth fill. And those inactive casks leave a little bit of that alcohol burn in my mouth, in spite of the water that's added down to put this at 45.8%. There's a little bit of a light bitterness almost a little bit like a numminess numbness numminess yumminess and numminess a yumness a numbness that actually almost coats my tongue with this one it's not the best bottle in the world if you can get an old bottle for around 30 euros buy it bunker put it to sash it away prices are not going to get any lower in the next foreseeable future, especially not for standards like this. The 10 year old, that's definitely a solid C. This is a C minus, maybe even C minus minus. Mm -hmm. Question of the day. What is your favorite Telesca? I've had, as I mentioned, I think it was 25 in the 30 year old. Um, nope. It was wet 
cardboard all the way. I did that with the live stream. It wasn't a live stream, it was actually just a blind casing with those eight different ones. And the ones that lost, a sky was basically uh, towards the end there. Um, but the ones that lost definitely were the 20, 25, um, 25 and 30 year old ones were just not worth the money, in my opinion. If you're gonna spend 100 euros on a Taliska, this is what you should buy, personal opinion. If you can find an independent bottle that has a Taliska, um, and it's around the same price, go for it if you can't find this. But if you can find this, this is the bottle I would say yes to. All right, thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for liking, sharing, subscribing, and telling others. All the best, and don't forget to write down in the comments what's your favorite Telesco. Whiskey Jason here. All the best. Bye-bye.